Science! Okay, D-Man, so uh, to kick off science this week, I didn't, I almost wanted to talk about it last week, but there wasn't enough um, info back from it yet, so I wanted uh, to hear it all from NASA before we talked about it. But the the InSight lander landed on Mars. Is this what you talked about with NASA earlier today? <laughs> no, but we will talk about that <laughs> later. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, so after seven months and 300 million miles, NASA's InSight lander touched down safely on a patch of ancient volcanic rock right near the equator of Mars. And uh, right around 3 p.m. on November 26th, this was the first picture it sent back. Had a little dusty on the lens there before it cleaned itself off. But, yeah, it's incredible. So the first photos were sent back and, and relayed to the two CubeStat satellites that are orbiting. They're these tiny little Cube satellites that we've talked about on the show before. They're orbiting Mars in conjunction with this lander. So a lot of its data will just hit like hit them. They'll relay it right back to us. It's a wow. lot faster. It's a lot clearer, as you can see from this incredible selfie that insight took from its arm after that, it took a color photo yeah wow yeah we so, almost never get color from space that's so nice it's so cool that it, that that it it worked without a hitch and um nasa administrator jim Brid Bridenstine said today we successfully landed on mars for the eighth time in human history insight will study the interior of mars and will teach us valuable science as we prepare to send astronauts to the moon and later to mars this accomplishment represents the ingenuity of america and our international partners and it serves as a testament to the dedication and perseverance of our team the best of nasa is yet to come and it's coming soon. Wow, that's a big super, statement. Super, super cool. I do have uh, another photo. This is actually from one of the CubeStats um, orbiting. You can see that's Mars, and that's the little uh, one of the the um, the solar arrays coming off the CubeStat. Um, it's really, really cool. That selfie so, picture is creepy with the just the. It just looks like miles. Of yeah, nothing. yeah. Dude, if one person were on Mars, we'd be able to find them because there's just nothing else there. It's just a giant desert ball. Totally. Did you guys watch it live? Um, I missed the actual live of it, but I watched the whole thing back from NASA.gov there. It was really fun to watch. In fact, uh, we said on the show how I was talking about I remembered watching Curiosity Land, and there was – um, the viral sweep of the guy with the mohawk, and I was hoping that there'd be something fun like that. Uh, they did, did you see the slapping, handshake? Yeah, I've got that for you guys. Missed it. Here's the, here's the incredible NASA handshake right here. You learned the NASA handshake, Jeff. I think so. I think so too. <laughs> you thought we should come up with like a fuel by death cast handshake? No, it'll be no. the NASA handshake. Okay, yeah, yeah. we'll just we'll just rip we'll get it NASA. down. Um, so in two to three months' time, um, after testing out all the instruments on, on InSight and making sure everything works right and everything is, is going it's gonna start drilling into the interior of the planet. And we're gonna start getting that data back. So you know damn well we're gonna talk about it even more on this very science segment. I mean, what if they find oil? Maybe, who knows? What if they find diamonds? Oh. Or coffee. I'll tell you what, we'll spend a lot more money on getting to Mars if they do. Yeah, you're darn Especially right. coffee. Or oil. <laughs> so, uh, the uh, second thing I wanted to talk about on science today actually has to do with astronomy, but it's back here on Earth. European Paleolithic art reveals the use of complex astronomy. Now, as far back as 40,000 years ago, ancient people were using cave walls to depict constellations in the night sky and record events like comets. Now, we've seen, ton this is one of the most famous cave paintings there is, and we've seen tons of stuff like that. For a very long time, we thought it was just a record of like hunting or what they saw out in, out in the world. Now we know that that's not the case. Um, the University of Kent researcher Alistair Coombs and the University of Edinburgh's Dr. Martin Sweatman said artworks at pale paleolithic sites across Europe are not simply depictions of wild animals. Instead, the animal symbols represent star constellations in the night sky and are used to represent dates and mark events such as comet strikes. Now, these scientists and their teams um, surveyed art in Turkey, Germany, Spain, and France, and they compared the results... Um, or they confirmed the results by comparing the age of the art by by carbon dating the the okra that they were using the the, the pigments that they were using yep. on the, on there, and then lining that up with star maps from that time period. That's crazy because you know stars move in the sky through through thousands and thousands of so years. So they can actually pick a year and figure out what the sky looked like <clears throat> at that time. Yeah, that's incredible. It it is really incredible. So this gets even crazier. The findings suggest that ancient people understood an effect caused by the gradual shift of Earth's rotational axis. This discovery 
of this phenomenon called precession of the equinoxes was previously credited to the ancient Greek astronomer Hipp Hipparchus. Hipparchus? Hipparchus? Hipparchus. And that's in 150 BC, okay? Now, they decoded, these scientists decoded that this famous scene, this is the La Sacra shaft scene in France, which may, com it may ca commemorate a comet strike in 15,200 BC. Whoa. So we thought this Greek dude came up with this in 150 BC. 15,000 years before that, people were looking up at the sky and being wow, able to keep track of that's time. that's incredible. They're saying that, at this at this point, Neanderthals after the Neanderthal ki became extinct and you know modern man was 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 coming into its own um, in Western Europe, people could define dates within the realm of 250 years, which we didn't think e they even had calendar an idea of a calendar. Yeah. At that point. So that is really really cool. They also clarified, and we've talked about this before on this show, the findings at the Gobe the Gobekli Tepe pillars in Turkey. Now, these commemorate, officially commemorate, a comet strike in 11,000 B.C. Wow. And again, we thought maybe it was just a depiction of animals or whatever, but no, they're actually coinciding with the stars that they're seeing and, and making a star map to commemorate this comet strike. So you think that they knew a, comic, a, com a comet strike was happening? This one hit Turkey in 11,000 B.C., so they damn well knew it. It hit it in their backyard, and they were like, what was that? We better carve something into stone to remember this. Like, Do you think maybe they pushed for a more astronomy-based society because these these comets were falling from the sky, and they were like, what the fuck is this? We better find out because there's more coming. Yep, a hundred. I, I, I thoroughly believe that. In fact, they're even making the claim that the world's oldest sculpture, the Lion Man Holzenstein Staddle Cave Sculpture, this guy right here cool could have also been found to conform to this ancient time keeping system and this was created in 38,000 BC wait what does that mean i don't fully understand that this is the same thing that this would have been created to commemorate either a big celestial event or some sort of comet strike uh. or it, it lines up with stuff that was happening in the sky when this was created. So maybe this was the god that they believed was punishing them and throwing in a sense balls of fire on their societies. In a sense. Interesting. Really, really cool. So Dr. Sweatman went on to say, early cave art shows that people had advanced knowledge of the night sky within the last ice age. Intellectually, they were hardly any different than us today. These findings support a theory of multiple comet impacts over the course of human development and will probably revolutionize how prehistoric populations are seen. Wow. So this is revolutionary. This is going to really make everybody kind of look back at everything we found thus far on caves and go, is this just somebody hunting a woolly mammoth or or something, or is it they actually are they 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 connotating something a heck of a lot more? You I, know? I've always believed that <clears throat> prehistoric man was much more civilized than than we could have ever yes. assumed because I, I believe that these comics comet. I don't, why am I having trouble with the word comet? comet. comet. Jesus. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> these comet strikes were keep on setting them back, right? Yeah. You know, it keeps on hitting them, keeps on wiping them out, keeps on blasting out technologies that they had come up with, and we just don't have any record of it. Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat that, like, they've actually confirmed this on some, and they're really trying to, they're working hard to confirm it on others, and we're going to probably find that this is, like he said, is going to change how we perceive ancient civilizations. And I'm, And this is... Ancient, thirty-eight thousand BC, That's fifteen thousand BC. That's insane. That's uh, before ancient Egypt. I mean, well, not necessarily. I mean, there was ancient Egypt at that time, but not the one that. I mean, you know, we the just Great pyramid and all that stuff. We just assumed that they thought the stars in the sky were just lights. You know, they. We just assumed that they did had no idea of what was going on. I yeah. just don't think that was the case. They no. had a lot more time to think about these things. Yeah, and especially if shit was coming down on them, they were like, "Well, let's sit around and figure this shit out." Yeah. And I mean, you know, it, it just goes to show, too, because I mean, one of the earliest forms of, uh, you know, tracking that is kind of the sundial technology. Stone, think Stonehenge, think uh, that type of thing where, you know, people would erect a monument that would align with what they see in the sky. And then their ancestors find out, wait a minute, this doesn't align with that thing anymore. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like it must have dawned on them very early on, like, oh, shit, that shit moves up there. Well, they might have even been like, well, I can't tell if that shit is moving up there. So let's build something and we'll come back in a few years and see how it looks. Yeah. You know, they're just kind of like markers of how everything's moving along in the sky. And that's yeah. how they would start to get ideas of what was going on there. It's so cool. So if we hear more about that, I'll definitely talk more about that on this show as well, because. That's just that's we talk a lot about what's happening in space, but it's cool to think that space has been affecting us since the dawn of time. I mean, I just you're talking about a world with no electricity and no nothing, nothing. And it's like, what did they do? Well, they sat around and they looked at the sky and yeah. they told stories and eventually started to figure shit out. And the sky looked way better back then, too, because there's no light pollution, no light pollution <laughs> yeah. at all. Except for the, the the balls of fires coming from the sky, <laughs> yeah. like shit. 